So which server virtualization platform is best? What are we talking about when we're talking about virtualization? Well, you're grabbing a physical computer, a physical server, a physical piece of hardware, and then you're gonna be converting, essentially making that server into a virtualization server or a host. And then you can essentially install a whole bunch of VMs directly onto that host, and you can run multiple computers in virtual form on this one physical piece of hardware. But it can get very confusing around which platform is the best because there's so many out there. And I'm gonna give you a bit of a snapshot on some of the more popular ones that are out there. If you're trying this at home in your own home space, your own home lab, then you can try these generally all for free for a certain amount of time, some forever because some of them are open source, some of them are free with some of the limited functionality. If you're not subscribed already, you need to go and smash that subscription button or click on it with your mouse button or with your finger if you're on a smart device. Before we do cover that, you need to check this out. You know, it's sometimes a bit challenging to deploy your own servers. You know, if you're gonna build some physical boxes, you need to build a virtual machine, there's a whole lot of config. You need some physical tech available. Wouldn't it be great if you could actually build your own dedicated server directly on the cloud? And that's exactly what you can do with Liquid Web. They're an awesome hosting provider that not only lets you use VMware and build your own websites, but you can also have your own dedicated server, your own dedicated flavor of whatever OS that you like. So so whether you want this for your own learning, whether you want to do this in a production environment, in a company, you don't have to go to these big boys like your AWS and your Azure. You can actually do this with Liquid Web. Get your own dedicated server. Link down below in the video description. Check them out. You've got a computer. You've got a computer at home. You've got, uh, it's running Windows. You know, Windows 10, Windows 11. You've got the Mac. It's running the Mac OS version. Even you've got Linux potentially as well. But then what you can do is you can actually install some virtualization software directly onto that computer. This thing called a hypervisor, where you're now converting this thing into a virtual server, into a host. And then you can build VMs, you build Windows, Linux within a server. So you get a physical piece of tech, you would remove the operating system that is on that physical server. And then you install some virtualization technology onto it. Now, before you set up your server or your computer with virtualization technology, but making sure that your CPU, whether that is an Intel or an AMD, does actually allow you to install virtualization hypervisors and get them up and running. Easiest thing to do is find out what CPU you've got and go and search online, whether if it's got the AMD or the VT for Intel. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get any of these virtualization software operating systems running on that computer. Now, VMware is the leader. A lot of companies are using VMware and essentially you've got a number of different components in VMware. You've got the hypervisor, which is ESXi. Essentially, it's an operating operating system that you install onto a computer, and then that will allow you to log in to that ESXi host, and then go and build and deploy your virtual machines, whatever flavor of operating system you want. With vCenter, you can then get all of your ESXi hosts and centrally manage them in one spot. vCenter has a lot of other benefits, allowing you to move VMs between hosts without powering them down. You can do high availability and a whole range more. You can connect to your ESXi hosts and your vCenter through your vSphere web client. And vSphere is essentially the big package that all of these things sit under. To get ESXi hosts set up, you literally just go to the VMware website. You can download the ESXi ISO so you then put it onto a USB stick and then you just boot from that USB stick on your computer, on your server to get it all up and running. Your USB stick should boot automatically and then your ESXi installation commences. And then just follow through with the prompts to get ESXi up and running. Once ESXi is done, all you need to do is need to go and open up a web browser from another computer on the same network, pointing it to the IP address that you would have set on the ESXi host. The whole VMware stuff is a whole other thing and I've got a whole video on talking about VMware if you are interested in learning a little bit more about VMware. Then you've also got the Citrix, the Zen stuff. Well, this is now Zen Server. Well, you've now got Citrix that have created an operating system and you install that Zen Server operating system on the computer. And very similar to VMware's ESXi, you have the operating system that you download. So it's a fully fledged operating system and then you install it on a physical server and then you convert it into a Zen Server 
host. One of the nice things about Zen server or the whole Zen stuff is that it is open source. So it's a fully open source hypervisor, which is really, really nice. And it is free. To get this up and running, just go to the Citrix website, you create an account, and then you can download Zen server as a ISO to then install onto your computer via a bootable USB stick and get it all up and running. Now you may have heard of Oracle. I mean, Oracle has been around for a very, very long time. Their big focus for a significant amount of time has been around database bases and creating database servers and all of the database infrastructure, but they're also a big player when it comes to virtualization and they use Oracle VM. Now there is also another one called VirtualBox, which is part of more of a, uh, of a desktop laptop type of virtualization platform. But the Oracle virtualization platform focuses on supporting primarily Oracle applications and their workloads. If you're gonna be playing around with Oracle databases and the application stack that follows the Oracle suite, then Oracle VM may be right for you. It offers features such as live migration, high availability, and supports for both Windows and Linux operating systems. KVM or kernel-based virtual machine is a open source solution for Linux. And I love this one. So if you are big into Linux, then you've got to probably try out KVM. And what it can do, and I love this, is that the kernel itself, the Linux kernel, essentially acts like a hypervisor. To get it running, just install the package manager through a command line on your Ubuntu, your CentOS, whatever the flavor of Linux is. And then you just go and install your virtual machines, installing the OS, the same as on a physical computer. And then you've also got Proxmox, and this is Proxmox VE. Like all the others, go to your Google machine, go and get Proxmox. You can download the ISO, get it onto a USB stick, you then install the operating system itself, and then you connect to it and start managing your VM, start building your servers in your environment. And it is great. And then the last one that we'll cover a little bit here is Microsoft's Hyper-V. And Hyper-V, you install it directly within your Windows Server. So I've got a physical box running Windows Server 2022, and then I install the Hyper-V components or the add-ons, the roles into that server, and I essentially convert that server into a Hyper-V server. And all of this management of Hyper-V is done from within the Windows side. So which one is gonna work best for you? Well, that is completely up to you. And ultimately, you gotta think about the compatibility, whether the platform integrates well with your existing hardware. If it doesn't, then you're gonna have some trouble. The scalability, how big do you want this thing to grow? You're gonna to need to think about your future growth and your resource requirements. Have a think about security. Some have got better security than others. Some have got a significant better amount of support than others. There's a lot more documentation for the platforms that are bigger, and there's a lot more readily available information available for you should you wish to troubleshoot this down the line. Have a think about the upfront licensing costs and whether it's gonna cost you a lot more later on because some of these are open source, some of these are free. You're gonna be able to use the products quite extensively without having to pay for much, but then you've got some limited functionality if you wanna have all the bells and whistles and maybe other bits and pieces that maybe some of the more expensive ones do give you. I mean, ultimately they're all still around. They're all still used by companies and individuals, home labs, all around the world and there's a good reason for that because they're all really, really good. I always love VMware. I've been using VMware probably more than any other virtualization platform, which is why I'm probably a little bit more favorable towards VMware than some of the others, but I've used all of the others and they are all great. So maybe what you can try to do, go and download the ISOs for each of these, go and download the installation files and actually build your own VMware environment, build your own Citrix environment, build your own Proxmox environment. If you wanna know a little bit more about VMware, for example, I've got a full length training course you can go check out down below. I've got links there to a full Udemy course on version seven and version eight of VMware. We're talking about ESXi, vCenter, the full configuration, troubleshooting, the whole lot. If you're not subscribed already, you need to go and smash that subscription button or click on it with your mouse button or with your finger if you're on a smart device. And stay tuned for the next video as we continue talking about all things tech. We'll talk to you then.